everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. And today's question comes from uh, the TMC 1982, and uh, he, well, it was more of a, it was more of a link to an article than a question, really. Uh, but I, but I thought, uh, I thought it was a great topic. This question and, uh, is, what you think? <laughs> what you think? Well, yeah, but pretty much you just sent me this article, and I said, oh, that's a GNN. So uh, the article is, uh, if I can pull it up here, the the, the article is about. Um, it was titled, Are Superheroes Too Big for Television? And it's by uh, Graham McMillan on uh, entertainment.time.com. Uh, so so uh, he, he's, a, he's a writer for Time Magazine. And uh, he's a, he says, uh, Are, it's, a, it is a, it's an opinion article, and he gives some ideas for why he thinks that superheroes uh, have not been as popular on television. We're talking live action, not cartoons. Um, than than uh, than they have been on movies, and uh, his he first he first he kind of opens up with um, with you know wouldn't you assume that superheroes would be a huge genre on television considering how uh, how giant uh, a money maker they've been you know with the movies that I mean the, the, the superheroes have been breaking the records for a while you know Dark Knight broke all the records and, and Avengers has broken a lot of the records and so. And so the question is, uh, why have we seen so many of these shows kind of, kind of, kind of miss the boat on on bringing in viewers? You know, shows like The Cape and shows like that, and uh, then then uh, other ones that have lasted a while but didn't make it past four seasons. You know, really the only exception being Smallville. So uh, let's go ahead and put ten minutes on the clock. We're going to talk about that a little bit. I'll bring up a few things here and there that uh, Mr. McMillan said, but uh, most uh, mostly, you know, Vince and I will just kind of spin our wheels for a few minutes. So here we go. Um, so Vince, what would you what would you say having not read the article? I, I read it, but but uh, but, but what, what would what would you say having not read the article is is the number one reason that superheroes are not as popular live action television shows as they could be? Because the WB can't make anything that's not uh, super sappy. Well, you mean not. CW, right? Because you're yeah, like you're too. seven years behind. <laughs> <laughs> because because the people that made Smallville make sappy things. Uh, that's 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 not what I'm really trying to. Say. Uh, budget's the big thing that jumps to mind, and uh, like you can put a lot of stuff and you can make it look good into a movie, but on uh, on a TV budget, which is a little bit less, they have to make it last a little longer. So that's kind of where I come from when I think about superheroes on TV. Granted, that's not necessarily uh, wholesale true because you can adapt a concept. Absolutely, uh, that that's that's uh, one of Mr. McMillan's biggest points. Uh, he, he he says he says that. We've that that people expect to see the big giant special effects because that's what they see with the superhero movies. Mm -hmm. If what you're trying to give them is that, that that's that's what he suggests. He says what you have to do is is uh, well, I almost said simply. It's not simple. Otherwise, it would have been done a lot more. <laughs> but 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 what he says is you've got to make the TV shows based on superhero properties and, 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 com and, and superhero comic books uh, uh, specifically a different thing on television than they are in the movies, where the focus is someplace else. Something that you can only do on television that you can't do as well in movies. You know, he, he, he says he says things like, you, know, you can't just have a bank robbery every week, you know, I mean, you can film that on TV um, um, easier than you can some like the big giant, you know, alien... <laughs> huh, Eric's calling. Um, <laughs> what, what, um, you, you, you know, the... the, the uh, the, the big giant, uh, you know, like alien invasions and things like that, um, but uh, but you can do it. Uh, you can do a television show in such a way where you just put the focus someplace else. And and, and, I, and I and I say that it requires smarter storytelling. Yeah, see, in the case of the Flash, he was a scientist. In the case of Smallville, he whines. I mean, that's what you do. <laughs> you find a different focus. <laughs> well, I'd say it's interesting you bring Sorry. up the, 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 the Flash because I wouldn't even thought of, of, of talking about that because that's 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 so much longer ago. Um, yeah, the, the the problem with the Flash was uh, it was this idea because it was in 1990. It was just after the explosion of Batman, and it was it was it, it, it being a superhero. It's kind of like Batman. Mm -hmm. It's got to be it's got to be crime drama. And it's got to be gritty, and it, it's got it's got to have a really dark color palette, and the mood has to be kind of broody. But it's the Flash, mm -hmm. you know. The guy wears this bright red costume; it, it doesn't mesh. And so, toward the end of the few episodes they made of that show, and they made they made a full season; it was about twenty episodes. Um, toward the end of that, of that season, they started getting more lighthearted, and they started making it trying to make it look a little bit more like like the comics. And it was too little, too late. They should have started with that because guess what? It was a better show, and it got silly. It, it, the Flash was actually a better show, silly than it was than it was dark. I thought. That's I like good. things about the pilot. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think that it was the kind of show that could reach a big audience. Yeah, you know that's the thing is that uh, I just when I start trying to reach for uh, superheroes on television, uh, the big thing that comes to mind is the Hulk and Smallville. 
uh, or Incredible Hulk. Those were the long-lasting ones, right? And those are the only things that really popped to mind. But there was a Superboy TV show. Mm -hmm. There's uh, you know about four seasons, I think. You see, that's the thing. It's four seasons most of that Clark show. Went four seasons. Most, there, there's, there, uh, most. Uh, what's funny is a lot of these shows went four seasons. Heroes was four seasons. You know, a lot, a lot, oh, of, yeah. a lot of these shows make four seasons. Hmm. And so, you know, I guess there's there's two big questions. The first is, of course, and I think we've answered it a, a lot already. Why do those shows only last four seasons? The second question is. Do they need to last much longer than that, some of them? You know, I have this theory that maybe we can create a great miniseries and say maybe it's one season. Maybe I have a season to tell a story. Uh, why not? Uh, now, granted, everybody wants the new big thing, so everybody wants the new Smallville, everybody wants the new Lost. So, uh, and granted, Lost not a superhero property, but still. Uh, they want the thing that they can keep going for ten seasons and make buku bucks on. Uh, yeah. But why not get people, you know, really jazzed about the thing that's going to work until the end, and then get them jazzed about something else after that? Well, because that's really super hard. I mean, that's that's the answer to that question. But you're absolutely right. You know, um, that's not to say that 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 a, that a superhero property would necessarily have any harder of a time than science fiction or western or anything like that on an episodic basis to have a really long-lasting show. I almost think that part of the problem is trying to make superhero too archy. Like, like, uh, and I'm not saying that that can't work either, although I think it's way, way harder. Um, Heroes, that format being being trying to put a graphic novel on television, because that's really what it was. I mean, I mean, it opens, it says volume one, and then every episode is a chapter, and they try to make it look like a live-action graphic novel. You know what the problem with that is? Graphic novels don't necessarily have to have a sequel. You see what I'm saying? And so when that, when that first graphic novel is over, where is there left to go? And, and, and so that, that's why... Well, two big things with Heroes. When that show started, uh, and, 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 I, and I didn't watch, I didn't start watching it until a few episodes in. And uh, you know, I started watching it episode like five or six, and then of course I went back and watched and, and watched the rest of it. And I was like, this show feels like it's been on forever. Like, like, like they got it right from the beginning. It looked like they've been making it for a long time. And then they got the second season, and it looked like a really bad start to a, to a, to a first season. You know, it was like it was like we're, we're floundering. We don't know where to go. The show hasn't found its footing yet. But it had its footing for 22 episodes. You know, and and, and so and so the, the the big reason. And McMillan talks a lot about the heroes, and what what he says about that show um, is just what I said about it. He he was like he was like, look, you get to the end of that show, and they've saved the world. How much bigger can you get than that? If you're going to stay grounded, if you're not going to go to space or something, it, it, you know he doesn't say that, but he, but he, but he but just says, "How much bigger can, can, can you do? Your your characters have saved the world, so now all you can really do is <laughs> save it again." And then the difficulty is coming up with something where you don't repeat yourself, and that's precisely what they did. They kept repeating themselves. Uh, the, the the second season, the same thing. The first season did where uh, there was somebody who had premonitions premonitions of, the, of, the, of a terrible future thing happening, and people had to try to stop that. It's not interesting the second time. You know, we've already seen it. And that show has a lot of other problems that I won't get into, but that was the that was the biggest of them. Was the first season, and I want to mention this because of the miniseries thing you said. The first season feels like a show. It feels like the, the beginning, middle, and end of a story, a show. It's done. I didn't need any more. And once I got done watching more of it, I didn't want any more. Mm. So yeah. And, you know, I feel that way about movies a lot of the time, but they're still, even with movies, they're trying to do the same thing. So, in premise, in, in goal, they are the same thing, you know? You're, you make a movie to make more movies. These days, yes. That's Absolutely. what they do. Granted, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't make a Watchmen movie to make more Watchmen movies. But uh, that's, that's true. But I think, but I think that, that the fallback with Watchmen was we're going to make a lot of merchandise and we're going to make a lot of extra stuff for people to buy. You know, um, so, so I mean, like, and, and a lot of it was, was 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 cool and fun to look at. So I'm not saying that it was a problem. But but, but I mean, like, you know, they had uh, they had the Black Freighter disc, which which had the um, you know under the under the hood documentary thing on it and things like that. And so I mean, like, I think I think the answer to we're not going to make more of them. Of course, they were talking about trying to come up with something to make more of them later, but that's neither here nor there, because that never came to fruition. But I'm just saying that, like, that wasn't their plan. Their plan was, if we can't make more, we're still going to make it look like a franchise by making a bunch of crap for people to buy. Mm -hmm. Here's a thought. I don't know how valid this is, but uh, <laughs> I wonder if maybe some of, like, the major uh, properties that comic book or superhero companies have that they would want to license out, maybe they're already sort of spoken for? And therefore can't be done. You mean like as a genre. Well, like uh, like say, well, we can't use Batman, but we'll do Birds of Prey. Yeah, sure. So it's like, oh, we can't do X Men on TV, but so we'll do Mutant X. Yeah. Yeah. 
which also I think lasted four seasons. So weird. These four seasons? seasons? Yeah, well, three, really? maybe three. It, it went more than two. It was three or four. That's impressive for that. He year. mentioned that too, and I can't remember how many seasons he said it went. But um, yeah, this guy was really thorough. I mean, he's bringing up everything that we're talking about. Um, yeah, granted, I think it's pretty easy to be comprehensive on how much crap is out there. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's just not a lot. Let me ask you this question. Are there any live-action superhero TV shows that you dug? Uh, no. Yeah, you, you weren't a fan of any of them. No, I hated Smallville. I tried right. to watch The Cape, which I thought was cute and extremely comic booky, but uh, it was comic booky in the sense of, like, 60s comic books. You know? I had the same thing with it. Um, I absolutely adored the first episode. I thought it was all kinds of fun. Just because I hadn't really seen anything like it in a while. I mean, mm -hmm. it just looked like a lot of fun, but, like, but it didn't hold my interest to keep... Going with it, it. it felt like it was written by Stan Lee, which means it's great in concept, but kind of not sophisticated in execution. And it was, I just didn't buy anything that was going on in there. And that's, you know, that's part of the problem is that the characters become uninteresting for me in a lot of these, in, the, in a lot of the live action ones. And uh, I feel like a lot of the time they're stretching trying to get you to believe the thing that's on screen. And I think also, I think stretching also is the operative word because I think a lot of the time, in order to, uh, because they're just not sure how to do superheroes in that medium, in an episodic sort of medium. There's also a lot of stretching that happens with storyline, where you, you have a lot of episodes to tell a story that you really didn't need that many episodes to tell. Um, you can get away with that in comics because you only got 22 pages, but 45 minutes is a long time sometimes, you know? So um, you can tell a lot of story in 45 minutes. You know, personally, I wouldn't mind if they were to have uh, a little bit of filler beginner like after they get through their story. I I would take yeah. some episodic stories if you guys were to give me something solid that I can latch on to. Like, wow, those first six episodes of that Blue Beetle series was great. But Or I would take just episodic shows if the writing was really, really good. That's the thing, is that... Because uh, you, know, you can have stand a lot of standalone episodes. I mean, it, wor it, it worked great for your original Star Trek. I mean, you can have just standalone episodes that don't that don't connect with anything else. And look, it's a... You're talking about about, about, about a big... Um, you know, not necessarily realistic kind of premise. It's not all that different from 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 you know just a straight science fiction story, right? You know, you, you put you put some guys on a starship out in space, they're exploring. That's the, that's your foundation, and then you go and tell stories. Superheroes is not that much different, except that we just have a million of them. You know, maybe maybe the problem is that uh, TV is just too uh, marketing based, because uh... oh, I forgot where I was going with this. Ah, 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 sorry, but uh, I think. I think that maybe the problem is that it's just too marketing based. I mean, if you go back and you look at, uh, uh, you know, what makes a lot of these movies successful, well, it's not just Batman. It's crime drama. Yeah, absolutely. So, and the, a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's not just The Flash. It's like Batman if he were The Flash. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, they will. I feel like a lot of the, the, the superhero TV shows have been a little bit generic. I think the thing that Smallville had going from it, it had going from the beginning is that it wasn't inherently a superhero show. You could tell different kinds of stories in that because you didn't have a guy in a costume. Now, that only works for so long, and after a while they kind of abandoned that premise and then it became something else entirely, which was really the problem with it, besides the other problems that, with it that I've outlined in every review I've done of the entire first season. Um, but, uh, yeah, and Kevin Talia. <laughs> But, uh, but but I'm just saying that, that I think the problem is that is that we we kind of we kind of fall back on what we think are comic book stories. Uh, Eric said something. I, I want to close my part of this with this. These would be my final thoughts. Um, Eric and I were talking the other day about uh, Arrow, the new uh, the new show coming out on CW this this uh, this fall, um, oh, the Green okay. Arrow series, and uh, they, they I put out completely forgot. Yeah, and uh, well, 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 uh, CW bought it. It's actually happening, and they, they they put out a trailer. They put out a couple trailers, a, small, a short one and a longer one. It actually looks pretty good, I think. Um, there's a couple of weird things they're doing with it, but other, but but otherwise, I, I think I think it could be really good. Um, Eric's biggest concern is he's hoping that it's and and he's saying it's CW, so I don't see that I'll ever get this. But he he, he says what it needs to be fresh and have legs to keep going past ten or eleven episodes is. It needs to be kind of political in nature. It needs to be kind of a, this is what he says, it needs to not be another one of those shows where it's just Green Arrow trying to take down the mob. You know what I mean? Like, how many of those superhero shows have we had where it's just, it's kind of a generic mob boss, you gotta take down, you know, the, the guy who's, whose last name is always Italian, he's got an accent, you gotta go take that guy down. Like, 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 wouldn't it be a lot better if it was more like the comics with Green Arrow, where it was about, you know, you know, Green Arrow versus the, versus the corrupt politics of the city? 
You know, and, and that's what a show like that ought to be. And and, and, I, and I completely agree with him. I hope it's like that. Because the thing is, you don't really need super villains in Green, in Green Arrow because he doesn't really have a, a rose gallery. So you, he's actually a really good character to bring to screen because it doesn't have to be super comic booky. Like, you can get away with that character and doing more real-world kinds of stories, but they've got to be smarter. So anyway. I watched a TV show just like what he is describing. <laughs> it's called Terriers. Granted, it's a dramatically different town. You told me about that show, yeah. Terriers. I, I think my description of Terriers was that uh, if superheroes were regular guys desperately trying to fight against uh, uh, corruption, that's what Terriers would be. So. Sure. Well, do you have anything else you wanted to leave off on? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to mention, M Millen had this, this really good point where he said, uh, you know, the reason that, that superheroes are working in movies versus, versus TV shows is because we had a lot of space between the films. You know, we got three or four years between a lot of these films, so um, you, you, you know, we wet your palate a little bit for it, and you, you can you can kind of get away from the fact that well, the Avengers just saved the world this last movie, and now they're going to save the world again. Whereas it's a lot harder to do that in episodic form. So, so yeah, I kind of agree with that. So, in other words, if you want your TV show to be uh, have some longevity, don't save the world. <laughs> <laughs> well. It starts small and get bigger. I mean, he said he says that, 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 that he ends his article by saying that that, that uh, you've got to you got to start smaller with the TV shows. The, the the way the way to make them feel bigger is to actually go smaller. And I think he's absolutely right about that. See, and if you're Superman, you have to end your series by destroying another world <laughs> <laughs> that's trying to run itself into yours. Anyway, um, Clark Kent, one of the greatest mass murderers in all of creation. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think? Why are uh, superhero TV shows, live action, um, you know, not working out as well as folks maybe would like. Uh, leave that in the comments. Tell us what you think. Also, if you'd like us to talk about uh, some other topic that you have in mind, put that in the comments as well. Thanks, as always, for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book store. See you next time.